Hello everyone and welcome to the new episode of In Conversations with a series where we interview film industry professionals to know more about their craft and how they contribute to the film industry. My today's guest is eminent screenwriter Sumit Purohit sir. Thanks for joining in and how are you doing today? I'm fine. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, that's that's great to hear sir. It's it's a huge honor first and for first time also it's a huge honor. Uh, look, sir. Before we begin, I would just like to kind of uh, give you a walkthrough about what it, our conversation will be. So, our today's conversation would be mostly be deep diving into your creative process and the Indian film industry in general. But before we get into that, uh, could you share us a little bit about your background and how you got started as a screenwriter? It's a long story. So, I I come from a small town, Muthuramchal, called Shrinagar, not to be confused with the Shrinagar in Jammu Kashmir. So, when you're growing in a small town like that, you don't imagine that one day you're making films, right? Yeah. Uh, but I used to sketch a lot. Now, it's like looking back and, you know, saying, okay, you know, I used to sketch and uh, those sketches usually like had some kind of a narration. All right. Uh, yeah. And um, uh, then I started writing plays in school, uh, but never took it seriously because uh, both my parents are science teachers. Uh, <laughs> But then they saw my interest and I thought I, I can get into animation. That's probably what I will enjoy. Uh, so I tried you know, the, giving exam for NID and you know, different fine arts colleges. Yeah. colleges. But then I also, also started realizing that you know, animation needs certain kind of a skill. And probably I do not have that kind of a skill. And, and it's not probably the sketching part of it which interests me, but the, but the narrative, the, yeah. especially the visual narrative of it. Yeah. Because I used to read, read uh, a lot of graphic novels and so the visual part of it, uh, what interested me and then I got admission in Baroda Fine Arts, I did my graduation in Artist in Aesthetics and we used to have a, like a very strong theatre group there and a lot of our teachers used to write for theatre. Uh, so there I started taking my writing a little more seriously and uh, started making short films because I used to have a handicap. So I think the logical next step was to make films. Yeah. So it's that kind of a journey. Uh, so like you told that initially you got interested into this world of filmmaking by animation. Like so animation uh, through like you were like more of a visual storyteller rather than a so, script writer in, in its in, in your initial stage. So what are some of the films or any sort of any mediums or anything which inspired you? Uh, so one like this is when you look back. It's it's not yeah. when you're growing up. You, yeah. you realize this. This is a, like now I'm looking back and saying, okay, probably that's where the interest uh, grew in. But I think uh, for me, like craft wise, like I keep saying, three important films for me, yeah. uh, you know, which, which I remember. And it's very important that you remember and uh, say, okay, these were the films which got interested, uh, got me interested into the making bit of it. So one yeah. would be like I remember very clearly seeing Shole. Yeah, and, Shole, yeah. You know, see, yeah. And, and, uh, thinking how did they even pull that sequence where you don't realize that you know Thaku doesn't have hands yeah. and, and I remember that that, 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 that oh, this, this look, looks brilliant and I remember very clearly reading about Jurassic Park uh, like the speak, making of the Jurassic Park making of the Jurassic Park so before watching it yeah. I read about it as a kid and there used to be this magazine called Sarita and I don't know why they did a three page article on making of Jurassic Park and that really got me interested oh, this is how they created dinosaurs and all that yeah. uh, and then uh, one very important foot film would be Abbas Kurosami's Close Up, okay. uh, which I saw in 2003 while doing a film appreciation course in uh, FTI. Oh. Uh, so there is this one month film appreciation course. I highly recommend it to everyone. Uh, yeah. That kind of changed how I used to watch cinema and my understanding of cinema. Because you usually grow on mainstream Hindi cinema in North yes. or uh, on, on uh, you know popular Hollywood. Yeah, uh, but once I did that course, and then especially saw a lot of Iranian films. Yeah, uh, and Iran, in a way, especially in Kurustami's film, it's very similar to how Uttaranchal is. Okay. The villages, and, you know, even costumes and the landscape, and I could immediately connect to a film like, you know, where is friends home and yeah. all that. But close up was something because I don't know how, if many of you have seen close up. Uh, but Close Up was a film which kind of blurred the line between fiction and non-fiction. Yeah. You know, uh, it's that kind of a film. Uh, so that really, really influenced me. Uh, then I got interested into, you know, the, uh, David Lynch, Michael Haneke, yeah. and, you know, uh, 
yourself but conventionally for people who are outside the film industry a script means something which is entirely in its written form so like there will be dialogues there will be uh, there will be like is like that's what the general perception about a script is so could you tell us a little bit difference about what is a screenplay what is a script and uh, and how do you approach it uh, in writing both of them so i keep repeating this and will repeat again i uh, you know i keep telling people i am not a writer i am a screenplay writer that, 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 that that's a very clear difference uh, for me if i was a writer and i had a la- skill with language i would probably write a book okay but i write visually and yes. uh, you know uh, a screenplay might be a very boring thing to read yeah but uh, you know it, it's it's a blueprint yes it's a for the film for, for, for everything for that like I, I, so there is just not the creative uh, part of film making you know there there is a production side yes. uh, side to it uh, so screenplay decides your budget the screenplay decides uh, you know uh, what kind of locations you uh, need how many days you will need uh, to shoot it so uh, like i suggest all screenplay writers that it's very important that you learn some some kind of a writing software Uh, yes it's very important because there's a way the final draft and everything final yes. draft and there are a lot of yes. writer do it there are a lot of free softwares or at least learn the format of uh, writing because that you know screen pen need to be in certain form yes which is different from a book yeah exactly okay. and, and uh, also uh, I, i'm forgetting the name of the writer but uh, sid field uh, or no, sid field i'm talking about a quote okay no, no, this is a quote from a screen pen writer who says that screenplay is not a work of art okay it's an invitation to other artists to collaborate on a work of art wow that's really that's a very important thing that you know uh, a lot of people watch things uh, and say the screenplay was good but how do you know the screenplay was good yes, yes. it has it, it 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 would have changed you know while making it actor would have contributed something the director would have contributed something but it's a very important blueprint it's, it's the foundation yeah for the film lot of lot of things on that foundation yes but that foundation needs to be strong so it uh, when i'm saying it it, it might not be three act structure it might not be a linear story uh, but it's a blueprint it, it's it's you know it's this sketch and then you're going to create that painting yeah uh, you fill different kind of colors in it you could completely abstract uh, but uh, therefore i think uh, if if you want to be a professional screen writer one you need to read a lot of screenplay you need to be very clear uh, how a screenplay is written and uh, have some kind of understanding of editing editing because, okay yes, that's because, an interesting thing yeah because film editing is the only unique thing about film yeah right uh, those kind of visuals can exist in painting it can exist in theater you know the music can exist somewhere uh, a uh, film editing where you can combine two visuals and yes. create an emotion uh, that doesn't exist in any other art form and that yeah. makes uh, you know uh, craft of film making different from anything else yes so it's very important that you understand how the editing works and this is not what i am saying uh, uh, i also edit yes uh, yes sir uh, i was uh, yeah so uh, i was I was actually going to ask you on that editing thing only because yeah. the thing is, uh, you have like especially for Scam 1992, you have served as the writer as well as the editor, and there is also very like there is this popular belief that a film or any series in this case is made or broken in the edit table. Right. So while you, so what is exactly the difference between that? Like I, like many of us, I'm sure uh, is 
having this question that if there is a particular screenplay which is which you are saying as a is a blueprint which is absolutely true then what is exactly that an editor does an editor brings in and especially since you are both the writer and editor how do you kind of balance it out so i one i, I cannot talk about other writers or other mm-hmm. editors i can just talk about uh, my yeah, process yeah, yeah. one uh, i think uh, the understand, understanding of editing really helps me while writing you know and like i was saying this is not what something i am saying sudhir mishra ji have yeah. you know, one of his tweets he said you know all writers screenplay writers should spend a year in editing rooms yeah 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 true yeah so uh, yeah. so for me um, uh what editing does is probably bring that rhythm to it you know the pacing to it and uh, uh because i edited i wrote scam and i was editing it it's very important for me not to fall in love with what was on paper yeah you know, i i will have to read then react to the visuals if i had written some great dialogue but the actor has just done it with a look so uh, you know i shouldn't go back to you know that dialogue was very nice because you know probably the actor has done it differently you know uh, the way the shot was taken so i then then i'm not reacting to the screen i'm reacting to the visuals when i'm editing uh, but whenever i'm stuck if that screenplay is correctly written i will always go back to uh, the screenplay and and wonder why it was written like that so some of the complex sequences in scam where you might feel they have been created on edit they had some kind of a structure especially the climax yes, yes. where uh, uh, there's a voice over and intercutting between lot of people yes, 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 and there's yes, a flashback and you know, there these um, you know firecrackers going on yeah, yeah, yeah. all that was written in a screen okay so it's not we might have changed the rhythm of it we might have shortened it uh, but it was there so i'm not big fan of creating things on edit you know sometimes okay. that might happen sometimes there might be very complex sequence and you might do that but i think it's very important that there's some certain kind of a edit structure to uh, what you are doing and uh, therefore the transitions are important i would even write like if i need an exterior shot you know establishing shot i would rather write it in my this my screenplay because once you're scheduling that film yeah that will help that oh you know there's an exterior shot here yes i wouldn't write uh, say there, there is a sequence set in sumit's house yeah so, but that sumit's house might be two bedroom three bedroom it might be a palace so yeah. i would write like i i would write where that scene is yes you know where that something in the living room whether it's up in the kitchen how big that house is i remember this other screenplay writer saying that he doesn't write unless he has seen the location because yeah. that's very interesting because uh, you know he was saying imagine the scene is happening in a living room and then imagine same sequence happening if there is a balcony and somebody is standing in a balcony and somebody on the ground floor the pitch changes yeah of how people true, speak true 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 i think therefore i'm saying that the screenplay is little more than a story you know how All do you right. even know and therefore though, there are no internationally there are no awards for uh, best story because how do you yes know? exactly exactly so, so yeah so therefore it's very uh, it, it's a, it's a different kind of a craft Yes, and you know, uh, talking in context of the Indian film industry, th- like many times, which I have not uh, seen in Hollywood films much, that many times dialogue writers are also credited. Yeah. Now, Scam nineteen ninety two is a very like it's a series known for its like you know dialogues. You must have also seen in social media there are so many edits on this. So, can you tell the role of a dialogue writer, and does it come under screenplay writing, or is it a totally different thing? Uh, so one i think it comes under the screenplay writing because a lot of time the dialogues will change the uh, the sequence itself uh, yeah, i think in india dialogue writer also becomes important because the kind of languages we have the dialects we have and you know everyone cannot be expert with th- that language yes. but how uh, scam was written that it had all the dialogues in hindi and english okay. when when sora when i was writing it uh, because it, it's a dialogue driven series yes exactly so we needed the it, it Uh, so the, i cannot write without dialogue whether a dialogue writer is going to come and change it that's all yeah. right but i cannot imagine a screenplay without the dialogue yes yeah. yeah. people are talking you need to write it needs to have some kind of a tone to it uh, yeah. we did a lot of research in scam and uh, you know some kind of that tone we gave to arsha and the brokers and the and the governor yeah. and karan and webber came because they kind of specialized in that language and then we gave them a full freedom okay write it you know the way yeah. you want to this is our res- this is our research and this is how arshad mehta talks and they already had a foundation to work on yeah yeah all right all right uh, so if we felt okay okay this like, even the governor is now talking like arshad mehta we said no no let's go back to the original dialogue so therefore okay. we even the dialogue credit uh, 
uh, scam, but you have to work very closely. Like sometimes current yeah. will come and say, "Can we do like a dialogue like that?" But that dialogue will uh, then change the screenplay itself. Yes, then yes. Then incorporate it. Not only that, sometimes what will happen is the location changes. Yeah. The whole dialogue changes. Yeah, like exactly. Said, the whole dialogue changes. So a uh, lot of time we will do a rewrite, uh, saying, "Okay, this location is not available. Available now. This location is going to happen here." Yes. So maybe it's like. I will go back to it. Mm. It's the it's the blueprint, it's the foundation. Okay. And there's nothing like uh, the dialogue can be done separately. That used to be. Yes. That's a very old school. Yes, uh, yes, yes. Because also where our cinema is coming from, it's it's coming from the not a key tradition. It's coming from a lot of yeah, uh, exactly. And there used to be certain kind of dialogue delivery. Yeah, 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 yeah. Larger yeah. than life and with a lot of metaphors and uh, but that change, like I think, uh, yes. that film that start started changing. Like I remember somebody going to Bulzar Sahab and saying. Sir, I've written uh, the film. I've written the dialogue, but I want you to, you know, uh, do a version of it. And he said, "But yeah. you said you've written. No, it's you know, it's like just people talking." He said, "That's the yeah. dialogue." Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. so, so, so it's like you know, it's a collaborative process. Like so, like uh, coming to that only. Uh, my next uh, question will be like right now. You know, in the Indian film industry in the recent years, one of the like I had asked this question to Bharadwaj Angan sir also that. One of the major criticisms which is uh, coming is the writing of the film is not good. You know, we have very weak screenplay writers, and writers are sometimes not maybe like there is a there is a high pay disparity between the stars and the writers. So, can you tell us a little bit about that? Like, what exactly is the landscape in the Indian film industry, especially in the in the film industry, and how is it changing, or is it going in the backward direction? Are we empowering writers? Because also right now in America also the WGA strike is going on. Yeah. So uh, like, uh, see that that difference is always going to be there because at yeah. the end of the day it's like the general audience do not really watch films for for writers. I think the only yes. star writers we ever there was Salim Sahab and Javed Sahab. Yeah. Said oh this is Salim Javed film. Yes. Or you say this is a Charlie Kaufman. Uh, yeah yeah yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, so uh, we cannot fight with that. Yeah. But I think there. Uh, There has to be very clear credits. Yes. Uh, the fee has to be correct. Uh, you cannot expect uh, somebody to write a very big star-driven film and then not pay him. Yeah. Like a big film and pay yes. him or her like an independent uh, film. But I think that is changing. I think a lot of writers, including me, are getting agents. There are talent management agencies who negotiate these contracts with with you because there are now you know international streaming platforms here. Streaming. Studios here, uh, yes. so I think it's it's getting little more fair. It's never going to be like yes. there are, are always going to be problem, and there are always studio executives yes. trying to control the narrative. You know, there will be there used to be a box office pressure, and then people thought the streaming service is here and we are free, and then you know these data came that yes. you have to do this in ten minutes, and this is what has to happen. Uh, you know, at the end of the episode, and so you are always fighting against that. Uh, i think average of what the good cinema is from everything we make is is always same yeah you know we look back at 80s and say oh 80s and 90s were really bad but look so, some of the greatest uh, parallel cinema was created yes, exactly. the, what we call art house which which was mainstream in a way then was created in 80s and 90s and uh, like i say some of our best tv work happened in 90s when all your big filmmakers were on, on tv yes I think that percentage is always going to be the good bad is always going to be um, similar. You know, yeah. there might few for few few months there might not be um, good films, but then yeah. there will be you know the, some small independent film. You you have to discover that uh, yeah. the mainstream is always going to um, remain like that. My only worry is that uh, we shouldn't fall into traps of remakes and uh, yeah. you know, formulas or. or, or Sequels, but that is something which I think even you know international American cinema is suffering from. And yes, yes. That's why you can. Uh, but I think uh, uh, there are more opportunities with, with OTTs. Yes. Definitely, there are more opportunities. Scam. Nobody would have thought scam would happen ten years back. Yeah. Uh, or or what? Uh, you know, some of the work TVF is doing. Yeah, TVF. Uh, so yeah. So I'm saying yeah. you will find a way to tell a story. Uh, by I think. Uh, Making films have become easy, easy, and, and yeah. uh, there's good and bad both to that. Uh, yes. But uh, if you want to tell a story, there are ways. So 
uh, and like I said, uh, if if you are a decent writer, you will find a work. You will find some kind of work. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, like again, kind of coming back to scam because uh, many of our film society members also. Can you like tell us how it was, you know, like creating the whole series because it's one of the best Indian uh, web series of all times. And uh, like uh, also in uh, like while doing research for this, I was also looking that the further for like scam 2003 is also in development and everything. Else. So like, can you kind of tell us what was the research process like? How did you said that you had collaborated a lot with the dialogue writers for the dialect and everything so how involved was the uh, like the screenwriter as well as the screenplay with the actors with the uh, editing again as you said but like in general how was it like what was the environment like scam 1990 i think for a, a, anything i think uh, um, i think you should enjoy the process because uh, yes. you do not know how audience will react to it. you know a lot of people tell they know but honestly we didn't know um, the scam will become uh, uh, this big because we thought it's a very technical series it's in the yeah, mobile yeah, yeah. market you know it has prateek gandhi nobody yeah. really knew prateek then and it was on sony live um, yeah. so for us it was a very small like we had a very indie approach to it that yeah. let's at least make it you know the way we want and we got that kind of freedom with ansal applause and you know yes. let's at least yeah. make it correct so i think one the, i think the research process just sitting with a lot of these people from 90s and hearing those stories uh, yeah this uh, some of the people you cannot even name and you know they, them yeah. telling uh, you these stories because see that uh, it's based on sucheta dalal and debashi is yes. book but that book is a very technical book and yeah. it, it's a very detailed book you know arshan mehta is few chapters in that because the scam itself was very big so we yes. said yes but then we realized oh this is this is a very difficult adaptation so then we realized it has to be also about how the book was written because that's not a part of the book so a lot of time we spend was with sucheta and devashin they were like why are you even asking about that <laughs> so, yeah so then we said okay for for uh, narrative it's very important to see how the scam came into picture so it's it's kind of based on the book but a lot of these stories came from them a lot of people they introduced um, us to and uh, then they started realizing that we need a little more drama yeah uh, so then and in, in, uh, in bombay if you meet people from 90s yeah. you know, everyone had a harshan mehta story yeah you know i was at a wedding and you know harshan bhai was there or yeah, this yeah, was yeah. happening in, in the ring and uh, uh, so it uh, just hearing those stories some of which you know we couldn't even include in the series i think that was the experience and uh, a lot of people thought that uh, harsha that all this broker gang you know they 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 spoke in very filmy one liners but that yeah. again came from the research because when we used to sit with these uh, uh, brokers and uh, you know uh, people from share market they used to talk in that those one lines <laughs> yeah. you know, they will give you these examples because you have to understand they are trying to sell you something which you do not understand yes so they have to come up with these one lines and so a lot of so we just used to note those lines and that went to dialogue writers and say okay so it's not like even the governor is speaking like that yeah 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 like they're speaking in a technical journalist are speaking that that way yes. the brokers are speaking that yeah yeah so yeah saying that that all everything came from research so one research is just the facts and the number but other research is just understanding how two people talk and that's a difficult part yeah true true but true what was happening between these two bankers what was a broker talking to other banker yes so i think that that was really fun to create that world and create this 90s and then you know have lot of the easter eggs where yeah 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 you, where you can like just having rk lakshman there or yes somebody, yes just yes, yes, yes. yeah so i'm saying then we started punctuating it with some the how do we say it's 80 somebody talking about kapil dev and you know, somebody yeah. you know, again then kb talking about kbc i think an audience started enjoying that the use yes. of those songs like in exactly. the end, those songs were actually written in the screenplay so we knew that it is going to end with a song and which is going to describe the episode so every time we didn't get the right for it but uh, you know we knew that this is how the episodes are going to end okay so i think, this, I think it, it, the experience was so good i think that is that is very important yeah you you the process has to be really fun yes so like you uh, know in, in fact that is very true because now that you said that uh, Uh, like anybody who grew up in the 90s you know because yeah. in fact uh, people i know also who are like now 40 and 50 years of age they are also like oh my god this was happening i was in college yeah. at that time i used to study this 
every day in the news this was happening so many people actually could relate with that so uh, that's the, that like actually kind of brings me to my next question how did you kind of uh, manage to you know keep that authenticity and groundedness to this uh, scam 1992 series and how did you balance it with the creative vision of everyone in the room like all of you are individual creative writers are having their own creative voices but what happens most of time is that when a group of writers or when a group of professionals come in if there are very strong creative differences then you know there will be clashes then you know yeah. there is not a fixed goal so how did you kind of balance that to focus on the end goal of making this series? so one uh, i think uh, i and saurav has collaborated for long okay both in side edge we have written a lot of screen plays which were yes. never which have never developed into anything but we we have been writing uh, for very long so we know each other's strengths and weaknesses and we know that there are going to be a debate in the room but that debate has to end there it's always for the good of the the material so uh, also uh, like when answer called me and said do you want to write this uh, i immediately thought of sorrow because what so i had no idea about the share market Okay. But I knew that Shorab have invested little bit in this year yeah. market. He understood the market, yeah. and he is very good with the research. So I thought he would be the right uh, partner in, in this. Also, the kind of freedom Hansel gives you. Okay. You know, uh, uh, he will have his vision. So it's a lot of Hansel's vision. It's, okay. It's, you know, if you've seen his films, it's it's grounded in reality because all his films are like. That. Yes. True. So one of the reasons saying yes is because of Hansel. Okay. Yeah, we know that you know. we can have little bit of drama in it but then he will ground it into into rea- reality because some sometimes you know some of these research told us scenes which are so bizarre yeah hansel told us that you will have to tone it down because otherwise people will think you are imagining it okay oh my god so it's like yeah, the yeah. reverse kind of thing it's, it's a reverse process because okay. you uh, uh, they were like straight from the film like the, right. these are those kind of events so he said we will have to tone it down You know, to make it look uh, let this happen because otherwise people will think that this is com- completely writers imagining this. So some oh. of the most, if you feel this is like completely bizarre, probably that's the most real part. <laughs> Scam. Okay. So so I think he grounded it into uh, uh, reality. Uh, uh, other thing was like uh, I think uh, he. Uh, Like the, uh, this whole R K Lakshman thing, for example. Yes. Like we knew that R K Lakshman is uh, was in that office, and we had couple of scenes. But then he said, you know, when this f- first time this guy is coming to give information to Sujita, what happens if he bumps into, um, you know, uh, uh, R K Lakshman? What yeah, happens yeah, then? Yeah. Yeah. Rather than coming and taking reception. So he has a lot of these feedbacks, but he will always tell you that okay, I feel this is the problem solved. It. You are yeah. the writers. So he he will really involve you uh, in the, in, into the process. Yes. Yeah. No, but like I said, that uh, uh, even though it's almost like a larger than life, Farshad Mehta lived. I think that uh, I think it's Hansal who grounded that okay. into reality with his with kind of approach he had towards the filmmaking and you know just the casting. I think a lot, yeah, lot of lot of it. Perfect, I think yes. is 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 what uh, actors do. You know, uh, like for example, uh, I will give you uh, example of. Uh, Anand Madhavan, who plays the governor yeah. in the series, now that's a complete on paper. That's a completely mechanical character that has to be there because he has to, you know, give this information. Yes. But somehow he made it uh, more human. Yeah. Made yeah, it yeah. human. He. So I think that 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 I think a lot of this credit goes to actors also how they ground that into uh, reality. Also, he just I think the filmmaking was simple. It it, okay. it was not like he was not. Uh, I think what he thought the handheld cameras or uh, yeah. he, he was trying to always ground it into reality, shoot it simple, yes. editing is simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's be with the let's not overcut it. I think a lot of these things then finally grounded music. I think. Yeah, like scam ninety ninety. Like this, I think this. Yeah, so so I'm saying again, uh, this combination of a like a completely different kind of a music and. you know probably nobody will think this uh, a serialized scam will have that kind of opening credit so yeah. i i think it's, it's uh, see at the end of the it, it's it's the director's vision or showrunner's vision yeah, like said, yeah you do not know like people lot of people say screen plays good i like say how do you even know this <laughs> <laughs> yes you know so uh, like uh, i actually this is a totally kind of a curious question but uh, what exactly is the difference between kind of a director and a showrunner especially in web series because we have 
seen these show runner show runner kind of titles yeah, so, so one i think uh, uh, show runner in hollywood where it's coming from it's, it's a very casual kind of a credit uh, you will never see uh, a show runner credit anywhere yeah exactly show runner is sub- in many cases can be a producer okay who puts the show together who makes sure okay uh, it's everything is on the track yes you know uh, so in case of like let's say mine hunter probably your show runner is uh, fincher himself but the yeah, creator yeah. is the writer okay who's written it you know so show runner is a very casual it's it, it, anybody it could be a director it yes. is if, if it's completely writer's vision and he is designing who's going to direct it you know who's, who's going to the, the cast then it could be a writer also like yeah. aaron sorkin in any case is a show runner <coughs> so it's a very casual term in india what happens everything becomes a credit <laughs> yeah you see uh, these show runners credits and which is okay like but i think uh, in a series usually there is a director there is a creator okay okay so uh, like uh, you know like while and in, in general also while writing any scripts what are the particular genres or themes of films or uh, blueprints you refer to while like for example let's say that you are starting on a new project tomorrow you will be obviously looking for some motivation uh, from various films or series or it may be an entirely different thing which we may not know so could you talk uh, to us like how do you kind of approach writing a particular character or a particular story and what do you look up in that see th- th- there is no simple answer to it uh, okay uh, right uh, like people ask me how did you research for scam i will give you an incident why i said just to scam when okay. scam came to me and uh, uh, i growing in a small town like i said which yes. is a kind of educational hub as a 9 year 10 year old i have a very clear memory of varshan mehta all oh, right yeah it, 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 that was a time when your news used to be either your magazine newspaper yes. or, or prime time news but i as a 9 year old 10 year old have, have a very clear memory of varshan mehta which is people talking about him that oh he india's richest man is in the prison yeah. and he doesn't even have a pillow and he's using his shoes as pillow and this yeah. dialogue ends up in scam Yes. Where when he comes back from the prison, his mother says that, "Arey, I have heard that you are going to make a takiya." Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm saying, you are as a writer, you are always researching. That probably yes. that dialogue was coming from when I was nine years old. So it's 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 not like, uh, uh, of course, there would be a research, but it, it's I'm saying as as a writer, just observing, just reading, you are always researching. So. Uh, uh, depending on what series it is that research can change then yes and that research is very important because research will tell you things which like i said scam it told us things which we could have never imagined yeah uh, then you find a screenplay to it you you know you you start finding ways to put it to into screenplay uh, it could be a completely fictional like one there's not nothing called completely fictional even science fiction yeah. yes some kind of science uh, so you read about it you talk to people you do your research and then you find a way to organically put it into a screenplay where the research shouldn't look like a research okay it look like oh, because i knew it it's, it's it's there it's there yes it has to like you have to start hiding i think one one of the thing i think uh, scam also does is hi- it, it gives you a lot of information but uh, you know we we try to hide it into some form or the other yes without making it obvious and sometime like i say you know uh, it's also uh, it's okay if lot of lot of uh, things audience do not understand that is also all right uh, yeah. but they should believe in the characters rather than so i think lot of time what happens uh, uh, with research is we then try to convey that research to audience and then what happens these characters are not talking about in themselves they're talking to audience yeah that is where this happens okay why are they talking like this you know imagine harsha then his brother talk, talking in a language yes like if you are talking about cinema yeah you know we, we will have lot of references which uh, people might not get exactly but yes. if i start thinking you know what a cut is yeah exactly and then some, somebody say oh matlab ye hota hai yeah then then there's a problem so i think research is very important but then you have to start moving from from it and make it part of the narrative like it's not like uh, Uh, things happen uh, in harsha's life the way they have been portrayed in, in the series or even for for a show like narcos you know a lot of time you will have some incident which have which happened with someone else but it's correct to that era and you say okay can i bring it in yeah 
Yes. So you have to be smart with how you use your uh, research. Okay. So, yeah. So, so research is very important, but then at some point you start moving. Oh, like that was really an interesting thing because uh, like you actually kind of referred to our conversation like it's not necessary that we have to tell people that we are talking about cinema it's just yeah. two people uh, conversing about films and that's what the audience should uh, like get out of the like take so, out of the scene. I, I will go completely random example with this to a lot of people I will give a very mainstream example of Avenger yeah. Endgames yeah okay. now Tony Stark is trying to create a time machine yes. there are these formulas on screen it makes no sense <laughs> you do not even understand them, but they are so complicated that you believe this man is making a time machine. Exactly. Yeah. In most of like I think Indian content, what we will do, we'll give some example of time machine to explain what a time machine is, and this is how we have made it. And then audience is like, okay, that even if I can make it, yes. then I, then I stop believing in the character. So it has to okay. be complex. It's okay if it's complex. Okay. Okay. Like, I, like a lot of people came, came and told me, oh, after scan. I have understood how the share market works. I said good because I haven't understood it. So, <laughs> yes. I'm saying you have to create that illusion. Yeah, it's important yeah, yeah. To create that illusion. That I, I, I like if, if that there is something called bank receipt which becomes very important scam. Yes, now, yes. We never yes, really yes, explain yes, it. Yeah, it's exactly. Okay. You, the thing you have to understand is that if this piece of paper is missing, there is going to be a problem, and it's going to emotionally exactly. affect your characters. So we repeat it. Oh, the PR is missing. Oh, you know what the PR is. PR yeah, yeah. for ten minutes. But we never really show you that this is the PR and this is how it works. And uh, it, it, like it, it's a passing information. Yes, yes. Like now that you say, I remember. Okay. Like uh, especially like BR thing. I remember after watching two episodes, like I am googling everywhere. <laughs> I am watching in YouTube. Yeah. When I was in school at that time, so I couldn't even understand yeah. what those financial complexities were. But it kind of made me believe in so much that okay, now they are talking that the BR is here, BR is missing, and there is a tension, there is a rising tension. So I, I didn't so, notice it. Like you said, yeah. like you are saying, but but uh, we had a reference. So our reference was there this film called. Margin Call. There's a film called Margin Call, uh, and uh, in that, some somebody has invented some formula where they're going to know the market is going to crash. Yeah. I never understood that formula, or they never even show that formula. But I know, okay, these people know something. Yes. So I have to emotionally connect to it, and it's. I think other one of my learning from scam is that if you do not explain everything to audience, yes, you know, then. The show or the film lives on because then people start talking about it. Do you know? Okay. Oh, do you know? And then people start creating these YouTube videos and explaining yeah, yeah, this, yeah. this person. And, and uh, therefore, I think uh, Nolan has such a big following because he doesn't explain half half the things. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. He also doesn't know, but I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it, I'm saying that you have to be emotionally there. Yes. So, like, uh, like that kind of is like brings me that how do you make sure that it's not too much overwhelming? Like, for example, there are some films with like for talking about Nolan only. There, like, he has made two kinds of films. One is Inception, one is Tenet. While watching Inception, also we did not understand anything, but like we were so much connected to Cobb's story that, and in the end, we even don't care if it's a dream or a real. So, like, the top is spinning at the ending shot, but we believe in so much. We are happy that he is finally with his family and his parents. But at the same time, there is something like Tenet, by which by the I love Tenet, but by the end of Tenet, I was totally exhausted. Like personally and online, also many reviews like I, we are totally exhausted. In fact, I remember now that there was a news that for the press screenings, there were two screenings held back to back because they were sure that even the press cannot understand. So how do you make sure that you are not uh, like uh, like stretching it out to a that extent that people start to disconnect from the story which is happening on screen and cannot follow it? Yeah, honestly, there is no formula to it. It's, it's, okay. it's, you can never judge how the audience would react. If there was a formula, everything would work. You know, yes. Uh, again, I'm forgetting the name of the filmmaker, but he says I uh, I make film for myself. Oh yeah. So that, yes. I think it's a Dennis Fenner or some somebody has said that yeah. the only audience I make film for is, is like or Tarantino. I don't know. Like no. So I think that is the. Yeah. I'm saying that is the only way because when people say audience like this, you know yeah. they will like this. I want to meet this audience. Yeah. You do not know the, uh, uh, because honestly, I thought nobody will watch scam. Like, like okay. people say, oh, you are being modest, but it, like I said, it's a it's a financial thriller. It's it's set. In nineties, it's not very thrilling. The episodes are very long. It's, it doesn't have cliffhangers. Yes. Uh, it, it doesn't have a star. Uh, so I'm saying, 
there is no way the only way you can say okay this is what i like this is what i am going to make yeah 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 so, uh, probably uh, nolan's approach is, is similar in both cases yes and that's the only way inception would have wouldn't have worked we and tenet would have we would, the discussion would have been other way around yeah so, yeah yeah so i'm saying you you just trust your audience and i'm saying uh, i i believe that audience are much more intelligent than what a lot of creators think yes so true and, and on, only way i can make things is things i like yes that is also true so if i understand i i consider myself a very average audience if i understand it my co writer team understand most people will get it so you can fail and succeed in that but i think with any art form it gets complete when the audience reaction yeah 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 um, Um, and therefore i said uh, it's very important as a filmmaker you enjoy the process yes it's not about the audience reaction when you're making a film you have to go it, it's a very hard it's hard work to go on a set and trying to create which nobody understands when by yes. speaking uh, so you need to understand you enjoy that process yeah being on the set creating that writing is you, know, you speak to any writer especially a film writer yes you're writing you do not even know how this will turn it like what it's not like a, like a book yeah so you writing you do not know it's a foundation you don't know anybody can create any building on on it and therefore i'm saying in scam it's all a like, lot of credit goes to ansel yeah so the director's vision uh, yeah, it, 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 it film making is director's vision yes as a writer i need to understand that that it is uh, it is the director's medium and therefore once i'm done with it i have to hand it over and and like like therefore i said when i'm editing i'm only reacting to the visuals yeah so because it's it's a visual visual medium and yeah so i think it's very important to enjoy the process yeah you know in fact now also that kind of brings me to like uh, like the recently this film called air release it's about jordans uh, how they signed and it that film made me care for a shoe like i don't know the story like the entire film happens in office but the way it is written it makes me uh, like care about a shoe and we are not even shown the legend michael jordan at skin like yeah. only his back shots are so so you know that brings me kind of my last question before i go to the audience round which is do you keep in mind the medium of uh, the medium in which the film or the film will be playing while writing the simply because now like see, ultimately the film is going to end up at an ott platform that is inevitable yeah. but there is yeah. some there, like there are films like killers of the like killers of flower moon irishman i martin scorsese he is like his last two films are direct ott release in netflix and in apple tv and there's then there's something like extraction which is a very uh, which is a which is an action thriller red notice all these netflix big budget which are in india which are theatrical theatrical spectacles and at the same these are releasing in ott and there is again something like nope which in our indian film industry might be an ott film in that way but it's about a spectacle and honestly i, I remember i go well, i went to watch nope and it was an empty theater so while writing the film uh, or writing a screenplay do you keep in mind the medium in which it would be playing and uh, what it's like 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 i said i uh, i got interested into film making because of the visuals yes now uh, a lot of people mistake visuals for big vfx and jimmy jib moving and drone yeah, shots yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, like i said a iranian film can create visuals uh, Uh, which could be thrilling thrilling in yes, the sense I mean, exactly not a thriller but you know it can generate that e- emotion so you i'm saying uh, personally i wouldn't change my approach uh, yeah. uh, of uh, how i film it yes you know the subject should decide i think it's very important the subject should decide the visual language and not the platform Oh, okay. whether it's going to be theater or it's it's going to be a lot of people tell you that, but this is the, you know that you know probably you need more close-ups or uh, you know a, a different kind of visual language because now people are going to see it on a mobile. But I think that is not my film. I cannot approach a film like that. Okay. For me, the content will decide how it should be approached, how it should be filmed. Uh, yes. There could be a difference in writing when I'm writing a series and a film. You know because okay, yeah, series, yeah, are different and. structurally they can be uh, different but when it comes to uh, how they will look visually personally i wouldn't change my approach because if you go back a lot of us like i said i saw shole uh, on a small screen yeah before we saw it on a big screen in, in, in 
the re-release. Yeah, yeah, 2013. So I'm saying yeah. uh, uh, that is. I think therefore I wouldn't change my approach. Okay. I, I uh, the content should decide. I'm saying con- the content should even decide what aspect ratio it should be filmed in. Yeah. Content should decide whether uh, you should shoot it on an IMAX or a film camera or a digital camera. Whether you want to use an Alexa or a Red. Let the yes. content decide that. Whether you want to do it on on a 5D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I'm saying let the content decide. Uh, 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 decide and content will tell you how it should be filmed. Yes. Yes, like for example, like Shole was the first Indian film to be like shown, I think, shot in 70, 70 millimeter. Yeah. yeah, shot in 70 millimeter. And there are examples of Dune, everything like the shot yeah. in IMAX. Patan was, I think, the first IMAX filmed camera, like Indian film. Yeah. So now I'm moving to the audience questions. Uh, so like uh, before, those who are here who might have questions, we had also already circulated a form. So from there, we have the questions. So I will be reading it out uh, uh, one by one. So we have uh, selected a few of them. Uh, the first uh, thing, uh, the first question is from SH uh, Jayawanti. Uh, her question is, uh, mind is uh, sometimes either blocked with so much ideas or drained of none. How can we write even when these happen? And also another question is, how do we validate which is among good, which is good among several ideas that comes to our mind while writing us? I think uh, I I don't think any writer has the answer to that because that is how the all writers work. At the moment you start working on some idea, you say, "Oh no, no, that, I already have other idea. Probably that is better." At least at least that happens uh, with me. So you have to really push yourself and say, "I am going to write it." Yeah. Uh, and now because I am working professionally, so of course things have changed. You, you know what is going to get made, and you start working to, towards that. But I understand yeah. that. I, I do not really have an answer for that because I know I get bored with ideas and you look back at, you, you spend writing it and then you say, oh, you know, maybe yeah. I have a better idea. So, it's, I, I, I don't know if there is an answer answer to that. Uh, also, I am not a writer, like a uh, lot, of, lot of writers are there who, you know, every day they want to write something. You know, they sit, yes. they say, I am going to write 10 pages, whether they are going to be good or bad, doesn't matter. So, either you get into that kind of a habit. I am not that kind of a writer. I... Uh, like I might not write things physically, but I'm always thinking. And if yes. the idea doesn't leave my mind, and uh, then I start putting it in the paper. Also, when I'm doing a screenplay, I need to see that scene in my head before I put it in the paper. So I can write it very fast, but yeah. I will spend probably days just thinking and visualizing um, it. Like yeah. I said, and I will look at a lot of references, a lot of visuals, and um, uh, I think that kind of kind of helps me watch a lot of films. So for me, like I said, there is no formula. Everyone suffers from that. Every next idea is better than the previous one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So the next question is from Rajesh K. His question is, what was the motivation to add old cinema songs to Scam 1992 web series? Does it also play a role in the entire episode? Uh, so I think one, because I think uh, one of the reasons was I think uh, especially 90s Bollywood song, they had this very different sound to it. You know, it okay. It's, it's, it's a very different sound. Like you know it's a it's a 90s. Uh, the lyrics, the, yeah. the music, it's very different than some very weird lyrics. Yeah. You know? yes. So uh, we thought it would be fun uh, uh, to have this contrasting song playing to what is happening in the episode. And uh, one, it tells you about the era. Other, yeah. it's not like the song is completely random. It tells you how the episode is ending or what is going to happen in the next episode. You can go back and listen to the songs and then you realize probably you'll find some kind of a connection. Sure, and like yeah. I said, yeah, so I, like I said, it was always written into uh, the screenplay. So same, we might not have got right for the same song, but then we go and say, we went and search, okay, if you can find the you know similar song. Yes. So we had a list of some one lakh songs and mm. we had to... One lakh songs? Them. Yeah, that, that the Hansel and I used to go through those songs and say, okay. Sometimes we used to just, like, because it was an Excel sheet and um, uh, sometimes, like, how do we find this song? So I just yeah. used to search for the keyword. Yeah, is there a song with a chore? Because I need something. <laughs> yeah. And then oh, at least 10 songs, then, then we'll shortlist it. So I think it, it, it was kind of an Easter egg trivia and we thought it would be uh, yeah, fun, yeah. but it had, had a meaning to it. 
yes and yes. we have seen lot of lot of i think also i think lot of uh, american series yeah 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 like james gunn is an like, like in guardians of the galaxy and everything yeah, yeah. like there's so, always some americans yeah so lot of americans who were like subconsciously that also influences yeah like tarantino is again one uh, person who like yeah. uses songs and so, music yeah so lot of them they use pop song because they do not have that kind of a film song library but uh, for us uh, our pop songs are yeah know, uh, for especially the north indian it is the hindi yes uh, yes uh, the c- cinema songs yeah yeah and uh, the last question uh, is from aditya mohan shivastav that is did you face any obstacles that were influenced by political pressures or pressures from government institutions or threats while writing any such of your work especially scam 1992 another series no i do not know that uh, i think suddenly you when you are writing about real people you have to yeah. go through a uh, <laughs> there will be a legal pushback yeah okay did this happen in Uh, uh, you know, is this from the book? Uh, so uh, then your research needs to be very strong, and you have to convince the lawyers that this uh, it will be okay to do it, because okay. a lot of time the uh, the lawyers or or the legal team they do not understand dramatic writing. Yeah, they will ask you, oh, did these two people say this? Now I do not know. I was not in the room, so I will yeah. have to show them. Okay, you know, the book suggests that this person was this kind of a character, and therefore he or she can say a line like that. Okay. So you like you have to show them like either it's in public domain, either it's based on a book, or it will be okay to say something like that. You have to justify it like it's fighting a case. Um, yes. Especially with uh, something which is based on real real characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's yeah, I think, uh, and I think with it's it's getting more strict now. I think it's, it's yeah. Uh, but I think that's the fun that you know trying. Yes. Yeah. telling real stories but, yeah but you have to prove it to them that it's okay to put it on the screen you know that kind of reminds me that uh, you know i was watching an interview a few days back about of anurag kashyap where he said that nowadays uh, uh, a lawyer also reads his script which was not the yeah. case so is it actually to like how did like is it just to kind of balance out the situation especially no, when I, dealing I, with sensitivity i issues? have a, I, I, i had a joke that soon a legal uh, uh, you know a lawyer a, a representative from a government you know from some religion from they all will be part of uh, you know writers room okay and telling you what to do what not to do because that's a problem with our censors yeah so i was watching this abbas kurustami interview where he is talking about censorship and he says you know uh, a lot of people say sen- there is censorship in iran but uh, i at least know the rules that yeah. i can do this i cannot do this and yeah. that's how i make my films the problem with indian censorship is that you do not know what you can do and what you cannot do okay so suddenly you have made it and you have the censor certificate and somebody will have some problem so i think that way uh, our our we need to have kind of clear guidelines it yeah. tell me before you know i yes. make it then oh. i can do this and i cannot do that yeah so yeah that the anwar is right sir Yes, and uh, with that, uh, like uh, that's the end of the audience sections. Uh, like those who are watching it live, uh, you guys can raise your hands if you want to ask sir anything, or we will be moving towards the end of this interview section. Uh, so you guys can just raise your hands. Aditya uh, or anyone, do you have any questions? Uh, you can unmute yourself and ask. Uh, I don't think anybody is. Away, so because most of them, but like, uh, so with that, then uh, we conclude this episode. Thank you so much uh, because it was like it was it was a great episode. Like, like I loved uh, like I loved this interaction, and I also learned a lot. And I'm sure those who are watching it also learned a lot. And thank you so much for joining. And we also hope that you had a great Thanks. time. Yeah, it's always good. Uh, I think these discussions are good because you can go back and look at yeah, yeah, yeah. Work and, 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 so yes, it's yes. Always good to have these kind of chats. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much.